So PROMISE looked at how good a multiparametric MRI was at diagnosing and ruling out clinically significant prostate cancer. And it compared it to transrectal ultrasound guided biopsies, which is the standard test that we use at the moment in men who have an elevated PSA. Both tests were compared to a very accurate reference standard called template prostate mapping biopsies. So PROMISE was a study that included just over 570 men and they underwent all their tests across 11 sites within the UK and it was important that we included 11 sites because we wanted to get a, re a good representation of clinical care across the UK. And in PROMISE men had their MRI scan first and that scan was reported by trained radiologists who scored it using a Likert scale from 1 to 5 where 1 indicated high, highly unlikely, uh, a very unlikely probability of prostate cancer and a score of 5 a highly likely probability of, of clinically significant cancer. And once that was reported, the men underwent a joint biopsy procedure. They had the template prostate mapping biopsy, which is the very accurate one, and the truss biopsy straight after. And those biopsies were sent away, potted separately, and sent to different pathologists for reporting. The MRI was done at 1.5 Tesla rather than 3 Tesla, which is the higher resolution newer scans. And that was a deliberate move because all NHS hospitals have a 1.5 Tesla and if we could show that 1.5 Tesla was accurate then all NHS trusts were able to deliver this new pathway without having to buy a huge number of new expensive scanners. On top of that, multiparametric MRI involves a number of sequence. So we had to have T1 weighted, T2 weighted, which are the standard sequences that everybody uses for MRI. But in addition, we had to look at how dense the tissue looked on the MRI scans, and we did this by incorporating multi-B value apparent diffusion maps. And in addition, looked at a long B value diffusion coefficient. On top of that, we looked at dynamic contrast gadolinium enhanced scans to look at the vascularity of the different parts of tissue and all of that gave us information about whether the tissue was suspicious for cancer or not suspicious for cancer. So the definition of clinically significant prostate cancer is at times quite controversial. So we had a number of meetings with national and international experts in prostate oncology and urology and radiology as well as methodologists at the MRC clinical trials unit who design studies to look at what the best definition was for us to use. We decided to go with Gleason 4 plus 3 of any cancer length or any grade which had a cancer length of 6 millimetres or more. And the sensitivity of truss against the reference gold standard was only 48%, which means it's actually missing about half of the important cancers that need to be detected because they may require treatment. And similarly, it's also reflected in what's called the negative predictive value, which was only 74% in these patients. And that means that a negative truss biopsy isn't actually that reassuring in excluding the presence of important disease. On the flip side though, trust did demonstrate very good specificity and positive predictive values. And what this means is that if trust detects clinically significant cancer, it's very likely to be there. So MRI, interestingly, was almost the exact opposite of trust. MRI uh, exhibited very good sensitivity at 93%. Um, and what this means is it detected almost all the important clinically significant cancers that we need to find. It also demonstrated a very high negative predictive value of 89%. And what this means is that if your, neg if your MRI result is negative, there's a very low probability that you're actually harboring any prostate cancer. The downside, though, is that uh, the specificity of MRI isn't very good. It's only about 50%. And we'd anticipated that this would probably be the case because radiologists were allowed to score, give it a score of about three, which was equivocal, when they weren't sure whether cancer was present. 
and not surprisingly they erred on the side of caution and that overcalling has led to quite a poor specificity with MRI which means that a subsequent biopsy is probably required in those men with a positive MRI scan. No diagnostic test is perfect and of course MRI has a sensitivity of 93% which means that about 7% of men with important cancer would have been missed by MRI. So what we did is we went back and looked at those 7% of men within the PROMIS, stu PROMIS study and looked at their pathology of their disease. And what we found was that it was at the lower end of the clinically significant spectrum. None of those men had dominant Gleason 4 disease um, and they were all classified as significant purely on the basis of, of cancer core length of six or more. And we felt that this was rather reassuring because these men are almost certainly not going to develop aggressive cancer in the near future and their disease is almost certainly going to be picked up by other investigative tests down the line, either because they've got persistent symptoms or their, their PSA remains consistently high. But we did actually explore two other commonly used definitions for clinically significant cancer, both of which would be regarded as more conservative for, the, for um, uh, intervention for that cancer. And the first one was any Gleason grade of four or more, or a cancer core length of greater than four millimetres. And the other, com uh, the other definition is a Gleason score of seven or more, so a three plus four or four plus three. And both of these definitions did alter the diagnostic accuracies of both MRI and TRUSS, but importantly they didn't alter our conclusions. MRI remained consistently more sensitive and uh, uh, produced higher negative predictive values, and TRUSS remained consistently more sp specific uh, with better positive predictive values. Let me put that into perspective. If your MRI was positive, that meant we could detect almost all of the significant cancers that were in men with an elevated PSA. First of all, we're going to diagnose many more clinically significant cancers that we are currently missing. And those men are going to get beneficial treatment early. And that, I think, will improve survival. The other part to that is if your MRI is negative, because there is only a 1 in 10 chance that you have prostate cancer which is significant, it means that you don't have to have an immediate prostate biopsy. So men can avoid an immediate prostate biopsy if the MRI is negative. And the MRI was negative in about a quarter of men in the study.